All right, oil prices are recovering a little bit here after we had a three session slide. Still, we're hovering around a one year higher. Next guest thinks oil prices could go even higher. Let's bring in Jeremy McCrea. He's equity research analyst at Raymond James and joins me here on the desk. Thank you. So lay out the bull case for higher oil prices. I think we're in somewhat uncharted territory here. One of the biggest things that we're seeing here lately is a lot of U.S. operators are saying, we're looking at the Permian, the maturity of our inventory really starts to show signs of decline here now. We're on to our tier two, tier three inventory. And you've sort of handed the ball now to Saudi Arabia in terms of what you guys want to do with the, with the oil price. When I say uncharted territory, we were always able to add new supply when oil prices went up, but you're not seeing that this in time North around. In North America. In North America, which was the key reason why you know oil prices have stayed stable. But now, when we start to look at how much inventory we really can add, it doesn't seem like we have that ability, and especially with this day and age here now where there's much more focus on returning capital to shareholders, returning cash flow to shareholders, dividends, more buybacks, as opposed to increasing capital. And so this is what really kind of leads to this could go keep on going higher. Okay, and then let, let's push back on that. City's Ed Morris is out with a note. He has been bearish for a long time, but he's out saying, listen, the economy is going to slow down in 2024. That's going to show up in oil prices. And eventually Saudi Arabia is going to tire of shouldering this. And you're going to see other members outside of whatever this alliances to keep uh, supplies tight start to increase production. 100%. So that's always the bear case on oil prices going lower. We're going to go into recession, but I don't even think the king of Saudi Arabia knows where oil prices are going to go like a month from now, let alone a year from now. And what I think really needs to be taken into context is have conversations with every one of these CEOs. Uh, we do it for Canada, and so using that as a bit of a proxy for the U.S., there is a change in sentiment with a lot of these management teams in terms of saying, we're not going to add production anymore. I think every day we see the headlines saying we're going to shift to renewables. Uh, the energy transition is, is very real. And there's a real hesitation to bring on any new supply here, any new big greenfield projects. And I think that is a big thing that's missing nowadays versus anybody's models that we've used in the past. And they don't require debt. No one has debt anymore. No, no one, one wants to take on it. Yeah. So rates don't matter for them. Um, they're they're got these free free cash flow yields, these dividend yields that are historically elevated. They found religion in terms of uh, in terms of discipline, and yet they trade cheap, cheap, cheap. One of the cheapest uh, sectors in all the market here still. And I think it's just this demonization that we had, you know, for the last decade or so that oil is contributing to climate change and. Yeah, we all want everyone to go to net zero and it is happening. It is taking time, but it is happening. And I think there is this question of how quick do we transition away from oil and how long do we actually use fossil fuels? And I think that's why we haven't seen those multiples improve quite yet. So you've been doing this for a long time. What are your conversations like with institutional investors? You, you're probably in a great position to track sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for a long time, nobody wanted any of these stocks in their portfolio. Is it coming back? Is it still kind of a, um, you know, we still don't want it in our portfolio? There's two things that I'm finding here. About 90% of the new funds and capital coming into these stocks, Canadian stocks here today, are coming from the U.S. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is these U.S. investors who were big on Permian names, big on Eagle Ford plays in there. They're starting to see, you know, there's not that much inventory. And one of the big things that we're seeing up here in Canada is the Montney Fairway and some of these other plays that are really starting to see some new drilling designs that shows there's much more inventory up here in Canada. We did this survey with the executives here in Canada and said, you know, what is the one reason why you haven't seen growth? And maturing asset was the last reason versus it was the second reason when the Dallas Fed did their survey with U.S. operators. So night and day difference between the inventory upside that we see in Canada versus U.S. You cover a bunch of stocks, both natural gas and oil producers. So yes. like your Crescent Point, but then you've also got Birchcliff, Vermilion, Arc Resources, and I'll just save you all the time. You've got to buy on almost all of them. Have you been this bullish uh, before in kind of both both sectors? Are you are you a typically bullish guy? How does, how does it view? I've never been this bullish in 20 years of doing this. And it, the reality is there's the balance sheets are pretty much near nothing for the whole sector. Uh, a lot of and everyone is focusing on quick rate of return wells and really focus on a profitability. And I've always say it's not actually so much how it's being dispersed, but how value is being dispersed, but how value is being created. Mm. And 
I've never seen it as economic as we are seeing it today here. And you still haven't seen that sentiment come back. It's coming back, but it does take time for it to come, come though. Baytex, Cardinal, Petrus are the only three you're not a buyer of. What do they have in common? One of the things is I don't like to have oil price being going higher or going lower as an investment thesis. I mm. think I don't think it's it's very hard for anybody to predict where oil prices are going to go. And what you're looking for is that rate of change. So you'll have 30 names in the sector that go up and down with a commodity. What you're trying to really identify is what are the five names who are doing something better and what are the five names who don't have that rate of change as big as some of the other operators. And so that's where you're trying to marry that with the, the risk rating in, in a lot of these names here as well, too. All right. Never more bullish in 20 years. That's saying so.